Happy, happy Holly. Oh, Everybody okay. shake it out. Yeah. <laughs> So hi Gary, Sorry. welcome to India today. How are you? I'm very well. I'm having my coffee for the day. I don't know if you look. <laughs> so Gary, it's a busy time ahead for you with your new show, with conceptualization, everything. Tell us something about uh, India's mega festivals. How did the thought come through? Well, this I can't take credit for coming up with the idea of mega festivals. Um, I know the guys at uh, National Geographic well. We've worked together before. And um, I think... I might have been a bit of a surprise to be the host of the show. Like I think and originally they were looking for someone young, athletic, adventurous, a bit like, you know, Bear Grylls or somebody like that. But um, I put my hand up for it and they said, yeah, let's do it. And um, I was curious to know why. And they said, because you're enthusiastic, you love India. There's always a sparkle in your eye when you're discovering something new. And once we'd filmed the first episode, I just got lots of compliments about how because I was thrilled. Like I had the best time. That first episode that we filmed last September, which strangely now has come about, so Onam is, is now, um, was just the most wonderful reintroduction to India after, what, two years of lockdowns. It was my first visit back. Um, so, yeah, and, and in, in kind of National Ge Geographic's wow. usual style, you know, this is all about visual kind of impactful, you know, storytelling that means something. And so this is unique for me in a sense that it's not all about food it's about culture it's about you know the festival itself the stories the fables the the religions uh, the beliefs um you know and everything that involves and it's about the interactions the people that we meet along the way and then of course what connects a lot of that you can't have an indian festival without food it's just you know inseparable so it kind of ticks all the boxes for me and i think we've come up with this first series of six festivals which is you know, it's Onam, uh, Durga Puja, Hornville, uh, Holi, uh, Eid. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, uh, Ganesh, Diwali. Uh, Gampati, Diwali. No, Diwali's to come. This is the next season. So we've really covered kind of all four corners of India. You know, we've gone from north, south, east, west. Um, yeah, it's been an incredible experience. So Gary will be and, covering... You know, yeah, yeah, please go on. No, no, you tell me. Yes, I, I've talked... Yeah, so um, you'll be covering Durga Puja in Kolkata, if I'm not wrong? Yeah, we covered it already last year. So that was, we filmed Onam in September and uh, Durga Puja would have been October. So Correct. that was last year. So Onam was interesting because it was the first uh, festival they'd have, and, and again for Durga Puja since lockdown. So three year, two, three years, I think three, four years in Onam because they had floods prior and then uh, lockdown for two years. And so these celebrations were especially kind of important and very, very busy. I mean, Durga Puja was insanely busy. I've never seen, I think the director said to me, how many times are you going to say, I've never seen crowds <laughs> like this before? I said, because I haven't. Like, honestly, like the, it was on the streets of Calcutta, you know, it, it was like a moving sea of people that you felt that once you stepped off the curb, into that moving mass of people, you you were just, you were going, like nothing, you couldn't stop, you couldn't go the other way. You because were, I'm from in. Calcutta, so I can totally <laughs> so imagine know. where you're coming from. <laughs> yeah, so we, we covered a lot, you know, we did, you know, we obviously we, we uh, cover the story and tell the story of Durga and you're celebrating her, you know, victory over Mahish, Mahishasura. Um, you know, we talk about feminine empowerment and, you know, that uh, feminine strength. And that's kind of told through the, the episode of Durga, of Durga Puja. You know, we, we cover, um, you know, the Danucci dancers. I think we went to Newtown to, to I danced ridiculously. You oh. know, they tried to teach me a little <laughs> dance, you know, and they laughed and I made them laugh. I did a little bit of a tango, you know, just to try and break the, break, break the moment. But yeah, experiences like that and the Danucci drummers, for example, they're one of the only female uh, groups of uh, Danucci drummers. So there's this little, you know, there's this feminine trail through the whole episode, which we love. Um, and of course, you know, all the beautiful desserts. We went to Balaram Malik, um, oh. you know, to the, to the factory to see, you know, how they make all the different, you know, Did you, the baked, baked yeah. Did you have the baked baked rasgulla? Did you have the baked one? Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, he insisted, he insisted I had the baked one. He said, because it's their creation. So very yeah, important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I had it. To be honest, I'd, I'd prefer probably Misty Doy or 
Uh, I like uh, Son Papri as well, which is a really beautiful uh, sweet. So, yeah. And of course, you know, I used to find them, those, that style of milk uh, sweet, too sweet for my palate. But now I've visited so many times and also now I've been to the factory and I've, people have, I've realized people in Calcutta, if you say that you buy their sweets, you know, I bought my sweets from Balaram Malik, they go, no, 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 no. You know, it's like coffee that everybody has their favorite <laughs> little local, right. little local place, which is lovely to see. So yeah, we covered yeah. a lot, but that was, that was just, yeah, they were the first two festivals we covered last year. And then we filmed Hornbill in December up in Nagaland. Um, and then since then we've done Holi in Baraj Bhumi. Uh, we did Eid between um, uh, Hyderabad and Delhi. And what else mm -hmm. have I missed? I've missed, I've missed another one. Hornbill, Onam, Durga Puja, Holi. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. I've got them. Yeah. Okay. So, Right. So, so Gary, why do you why did you choose India for a show on festivals and food? I don't even know why that's a question. Are you serious? That's the question. <laughs> like it's it's yeah. Um, you, you know, we want to take this series. I said uh, to the executives at, at uh, National Geographic, uh, Geographic, I'd love to take this series outside of India, but it's it's almost impossible to leave without covering at, at least another two seasons. You know, like we've got series one coming. We're in the middle of filming series two, which is another six episodes. And then I can almost envisage another series because there are so many festivals that are, you know, compared to festivals around the world that are some of the biggest, most the frenzy and fervor, the color, you know, the chaos, the food. It's almost impossible not to feel drawn in and enchanted and kind of, well, it's magical in a sense, you know, and I think to to translate this onto screen, which I think we've done brilliantly for each of these festivals, um, is kind of a responsibility. So where else could we start? I mean, you know, right. you can't start it. If you did the same thing in Australia, it would be just weird. Like you just <laughs> would not, they'd be tiny little things, you know, with virtually no people. And uh, yeah, we have magnificent food festivals and things like that, but nothing on the scale of, you know, like standing on the banks um, of the river, you know, in when we were filming in Aramula or, you know, the Nauru boat race, you know, with 150,000 people just cheering and, you know, blowing, you know, the horns and, you know, just in this kind of, you know, ecstasy of celebration. It, it's hard to, to, to get that feeling anywhere else in the world. Correct. So Gary, which Indian state and the, and its cuisine, would you be biased about? <laughs> That's a loaded question, and I don't like it because <laughs> if I say if I say Kerala, then everybody's gonna if if you're in Maharashtra, you're gonna be upset. Um, gee, I think what I've really appreciated traveling this year, last year, and this year is the, and I I know this already, the complexity of the culture and the food of its traditions of all of these things is is kind of beguiling you know it's it's hard to appreciate i'm a classically french trained chef you know italian food spanish food you know european in in essence and every time i travel you know for example like on my instagram you see i filmed a young man throwing a parotta in tamil nadu in madurai and he's looking at me not the parotta but he's just he throws this thing it's so beautiful you can see through it. And he does it in 20 seconds. And when you eat this, it's just the most delicious, you know, crunchy and crispy on the outside and soft and tender in the middle. And when you dip that in the gravy, it's just one of the most beautiful things. It really is in, in that moment, you know, and it's hard to, it's hard to beat it. And yet when you then travel to another state, and I know this is a long winded answer because it's hard to pick out, but you travel to another state like Kerala and you, on the street, you might eat, you know, iliapam, you know, a soft rice noodle, you know, with coconut milk, jaggery and fresh coconut over the top. You know, again, in the moment, it's the most delicious thing you've ever eaten in your life. So bias, your honest answer, or oh, it's a tough one. Or maybe not bias, you can tell me your favorite Indian food. It, it really is South Indian. It, it's, it's South I heard Indian you like dosas. Yeah, I love anything like dosa, appam, iliappam, palappam, batu, you know, anything that's kind of ricey and soft and fermenty. 
I love. You know, they're some of my favorite flavors. And I think, you know, paired with, uh, you know, flavors like curry leaf and coconut and, you know, some of ginger, you know, these kind of aromatics, you know, cardamom, you know, nutmeg, all of these things I find really beautiful. And let's be honest, if I'm, I don't know, if I'm in by the ocean eating this kind of food, I don't think you can beat it. <laughs> <laughs> So Absolutely. yeah, if you want bias, there's my bias. But it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't mean everything else is deli- nothing else is delicious, you know. If I'm if I'm traveling, you know, in Calcutta, then you know, during the festival we're filming Durga Puja, then it's it's all, you know, puchka for example, you know, and you're oh. just obsessed about one particular thing or if we when we were filming in Braj Bhumi, uh, everything's vegetarian, so we're eating alu tiki and you know, kachuri alu jol and lots of chole and and all of a sudden now I'm obsessed by you know, all of these things. So it's hard to separate. But each festival, you know, has its own celebration of food, you know, its own um, nuances, which is delicious. Okay. Well said. That That's very well put. Um, very so- politically correct. <laughs> right, yeah. So, um, Gary, quite like, because you're so, uh, you know, you, you have a great, uh, you know, hold over knowledge about India's culture. Are you into Indian films too? Not really. I, yeah, I, I feel terrible about it, but I, I'm, I'm not even into, I don't watch a lot of television, even at home. You know, like if people say, you know, my wife will say, what do you, what, what film do you want to watch? And I go, I don't know, the one with this guy, I can't remember his name. And I can never, you know, she'll go, what, Sean Penn? And I go, yeah, that guy, you know, because I'm just <laughs> terrible with names. So no, I haven't watched a huge amount of stuff, um, I'll be honest. And um, I'm just trying to think of things that have been in, I think for me, it's more, I read more than I probably watch, you know. So, for example, you know, you know, I've read Anarchy, you know, by William Dalrymple, or I've read, you know, fictional books like, um, you know, wonderful kind of stuff that I've, I've appreciated immensely. Um, I'm trying to think of Behind the Beautiful Forevers, which is a wonderful book about a particular slum. Um, you know, I'm reading, what am I reading at the moment? My computer's propped up on it. I'm reading Indian Summer at the moment oh, so okay. yeah you know and yeah i read some stuff that if you're indian you just cringe maybe you know like shantaram was probably one of the first <laughs> books i read about okay. india and and people go well, no and i said yeah but to understand from a western perspective it's a great kind of window Absolutely. into india and when you experience bombay for the first time you can kind of relive shantaram you know in your own way, you know, the descriptions of Absolutely. riding a, riding an Enfield bullet or, you know, going to eat, you know, particular thing, you know, Pabaji or something like that. And it really, the descriptions in it for a foreigner make a lot of sense. But then obviously the, the more I've traveled, the more I read. Um, yeah. So Hollywood, not so much, but maybe a little bit more history and, and fiction around stories. Okay, so Gary, Indian the last stories. Yeah, yeah. So the last few questions that I have for you. This is this is uh, something which you've spoken about, but of course, it's it's never you know too too late to hear it from your mouth directly. Did you always want to be a chef? Uh, no, I didn't always want to be. When I was younger, my da- my dad was an engineer, um, very patient, very intelligent. Uh, all the things that I'm not, you know, I'm not very patient at all. I'm very, uh, you know, I need instant gratification. But all through school, I think I really wanted to be like every other boy of my school, you know, an engineer, an architect, uh, you know, a fireman, who knows, you know, a fighter pilot. I, there was one period where I wanted to be a pilot. Um, and then when I was about 15 years old, my, I didn't really connect it at the time. I didn't connect uh, what I wanted. I, I, I back step, I take a step backwards. My grandfather was a chef and I didn't connect uh professionally you know i didn't think that's what i wanted to do but my dad actually pointed out he said you love cooking with granddad because granddad had my grandfather had retired and so he had lots of time and he would show my sister and i you know how to cut an onion or how to make bread or how to make you know jam or you know something like this and he said you really enjoy that are you sure you want to be an engineer and i think what my dad identified was that i didn't have the patience or the you know, my, my mindset was far, I'm far too emotional. And he said, but you love what granddad does. Maybe you do that. And I spoke to my grandfather and he said, before you make a decision, let's get a job, you know, 
work on the weekends in a kitchen, you know, washing dishes or peeling vegetables and see whether you like how it feels. And I loved it. I got a job in a little hotel that was close by where my, my, where I lived and pretty much every weekend for, you know, a year and a half, I worked in the kitchens and I thought the chef was like so amazing. Like everything that he touched and he cooked and created was delicious. And so I made my mind up. That's what I wanted to do. I loved the, and I still do. I love the thrill uh, and excitement of creating something under pressure, um, of creating something that instantaneously you get feedback for, you know? And I think now about my dad's advice, you know, he said I can work on a project for three months before I get any feedback. You know, it could be a project that you get, you know, is not instantly gratifying in any way. It's very technical and whatever. And I go, he was right. Thank goodness for his advice. <laughs> so when I can do it, if I do a service for dinner, I can I can feed 150 people and straight away I know whether they loved it or whether they didn't. And that's part, that's part of the, the joy. Okay. That's that's good to know. So Gary, the last question that I have for you. Um, could you, because you said you're filming for the second season already, could you give us a tiny sneak peek of what is in store? Yeah, sure. I mean, um, what, you know, we, we know the 6th that we're, we're uh, that you're, so we're going on air on the 6th of September, Wednesday, 8 o'clock, six weeks in a row, six episodes. Um, and then, for example, if you look at, if you, if you look at my Instagram, you'll get a sneak peek of, what I've done. So, for example, we went and filmed the Hemis Festival in Leila Dak. That was our last uh, festival that we filmed. And com in complete opposition to everything that we filmed. You know, up in the mountains, Leila Dak is just stunningly beautiful, remote. Um, you know, if there's any place that you, you can be that makes you feel insignificant, then Leila Dak is, is where you need to be. So we've we followed various stories in and around the Hemis. And the Hemis Festival, I mean, we you talk about, say, Holi, you know, which is crazy and busy and colourful and joyful. And, you know, the energy around that festival is is something to experience. If you've never experienced that in Braj Bhumi, then you've never experienced Holi, you know, in, in a real sense. And yet you go to Hemis, it's tiny. The festival is so small. It's very regional, colloquial. Um, beautiful, um, you know, the land of the llamas, you know, it's um, it's mystical and enchanting. So it, 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 I love in this series that you'll feel this ebb and flow of excitement and chaotic and colourful to then joyous and celebratory or even just um, peaceful and enchanting. So, yeah. Okay. I don't know if that answers the question, yeah. but it gives you a little idea. <laughs> Yes, yes, absolutely. So Gary, with this, we come to an end of this con beautiful, beautiful conversation. Thank you for your beautiful insights on India, culture Thank and you. food. All the very, very, very best for your show. I'm sure it'll be a big hit. Yeah, I hope so too. And I hope everybody that's uh, reading the article or watching this interview can uh, tune in and give me the feedback. I want to hear. I absolutely. Wanna I want to hear how the Indian audience sees my perception of these wonderful, auspicious occasions that punctuate your calendar in the you know in the year and it's like no other place on earth so you know you you can be very proud of that wonderful absolutely thank you so much gary for your time bye <laughs> thank you bye bye